from the broadcast center in Los Angeles. This is KCAL 9 News at 8 a.m. Live in our green room, Dr. Lisa Guerrera is here to talk mammograms for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. She'll join us in studio just ahead. Well, all month long, we are marking Breast Cancer Awareness Month with ways women can reduce their risk. And joining us this morning is Dr. Lisa Guerra with Breastlink in Newport Beach. Welcome. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. Now, one of the big debates that's going on is when women should actually get their first mammogram. And I know that there's been a lot of questions and concerns about if it's too early, too late. What, what do you all suggest? Well, it's gotten terribly confusing with mm -hmm. recommendations for 40, 45, 50. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, to be the safest, the safest approach is really for mammography to start at age 40 in mm -hmm. those that are of at average risk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we know I have a friend right now diagnosed at 39, hadn't had her first right. mammogram, so it's really tricky and it wasn't in her family history, so it's always hard to say. You know, right. And for her situation, if she has sisters, daughters, mm -hmm. they would then have a recommendation to start bre breast imaging 10 years younger and than her was, age of so diagnosis. 29. And she does have a daughter. Wow. Correct. And that, I guess, also plays into the importance of self-checking. Yes, yes. Certainly, if an individual were to identify a change, be it a lump, a change in the contour of their breast, mm -hmm. nipple discharge, those are all things that we would love to know about and mm -hmm. do dedicated imaging to really focus in on those areas. Mm -hmm. And once a woman hits 40 and she starts getting mammograms, how often do you really think that women should get mammograms? I really am of the opinion that women should have annual mammography starting at age 40. Mm -hmm. That gap between two years, you know, things happen in yeah. life and sometimes one year becomes a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Two years then can c become three years. Mm -hmm. And so really trying to be diligent about that follow-up once a year, I mm -hmm. think is important. Mm -hmm. What about genetic testing? Um, I was the first in my family. It wasn't recommended that I have the genetic testing, but do you recommend that a lot of women have the genetic testing? Well, 70 to 80% of breast cancers actually have nothing to do with our genetic makeup. It's mm -hmm. a cell that made a bad cell and that bad cell kind of ran rampant. Mm -hmm. But there's Certainly are some individuals that we do want to consider genetic testing for and typically that's individuals who've been diagnosed with a breast cancer at a relatively young age mm -hmm. such as 45 or less mm -hmm. an individual with ovarian cancer at any age mm -hmm. an individual or family that's had both breast and ovarian cancer mm -hmm. a male patient or relative mm -hmm. with breast cancer mm -hmm. an individual who's had breast cancer in both breasts or two separate distinct different breast cancers even if they're in the same breast and particularly if there's family history as well mm -hmm. and also those individuals that may be of Ashkenazi Jewish descent with mm -hmm. breast or ovarian cancer at any age mm -hmm. so those are the typical individuals that we focus attention on although there are other individuals that we might consider that for as well mm -hmm. let's talk about some of the risks the risk factors that are out there for women Sure. Well, the top two risk factors for breast cancer, we honestly have no control over. Mm -hmm. Number one, being a woman. Mm -hmm. Our risk is higher than our male counterparts. Mm -hmm. And the second is really just being alive and aging. Mm -hmm. So again, can't really get rid of those sorts of risks. Mm -hmm. But certainly there are other factors that can play a role, including an individual's hormone exposure, mm -hmm. things like alcohol consumption, mm -hmm. lifestyle issues as well. Mm -hmm. And weight, weight uh, being overweight. Right. Absolutely. So each one of our fat cells has hormones associated with it. Mm -hmm. And essentially, if we have a little bit more fatty tissue than mm -hmm. we would like to see, your body is put under more hormone exposure. Mm -hmm. And so things that we can actively do to help decrease that risk would include things like weight loss for an individual that may be above ideal body weight. Mm -hmm. But some of us may have trouble getting down to ideal body mm -hmm. weight. And so I think also a really important consideration is activity. Mm -hmm. Vigorous active. activity for at least 30 minutes a day, most days of the week mm -hmm. is a great means of risk reduction. Mm -hmm. And then trying to avoid consuming more than one glass of alcohol a day okay. is also felt to keep an individual's risk lower. Okay. And also cutting down on that sugar, doctor. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Sarah. We certainly appreciate it with Breastlink in Newport Beach. We appreciate all the information. Be sure to stay with us. We'll be right back.